Uh, today we're talking to uh, Professor Byron Sharp, uh, Director of the Ernberg Institute uh, for Marketing Science at the University of South Australia. Uh, the Professor uh, is what you'd call a marketing scientist. Uh, and the purpose of science is to simplify the enormously complex world we live in. Um, to, so to put this in perspective, uh, you've all heard of the show Mythbusters. Um, in today's show, we're going to bust some major marketing myths. And uh, Professor, welcome. Thank you. Your work is based on facts and research. Um, most of our viewers are medium-sized uh, businesses, you know, the backbone of, of most countries. Um, and um, are they being fleeced by snow call, snake oil salesmen? Uh, yes, you certainly can be. If you don't know about the facts, it's pretty easy to be led down the garden path, and there are a lot of there are a lot of consultants out there who may I mean they may not deliberately be you know snake oil merchants. They may actually believe in the product they're selling, but it's wrong. What's the biggest uh, marketing myth that we need to uh, sort of bust here today? Well, there are a lot of myths in marketing. Uh, probably the two most dangerous ones uh, I can think of is uh, one is the belief that uh, that your brand is so special and different that there is a unique sort of group of customers out there that, that like it and you need to conduct expensive research to try to find out who these people are and you need to constantly only be talking to that type of person. Uh, this is a myth. Uh, brands compete against other brands and they sell to roughly the same sort of customers and so you need to go for all the customers that are in the marketplace um, which means you, you, know, you don't need to waste money with all that thing and you have to be very careful that you don't end up with a marketing plan that just talks to a very very select group that I mean that's, that's just not a way to grow and the other one which is is related to that is um, the idea that our that we can extract growth out of out of loyalty out of targeting our heaviest customers and that they are our most important customers in actual fact most customers for any brand are, are really really very light they don't, they don't buy the category that often and of course they buy the brand so they don't get around to buying us very often and and these are the the major source of growth so uh, it's it's vital that you reach non-customers uh, reach is, is absolutely paramount so you're saying it's that simple well, it's no marketing's not simple. If it, was, if it was easy, you know, marketers wouldn't be well paid and things. And it's not. It's it's complicated. It's hard to get that reach because lots of all oh, your competitors. I mean, it's hard. It's it's a competitive marketing game. All your competitors are trying to do the same. If you were selling to your own special sort of customer, and your competitors were selling to their special sort of customer, well, you wouldn't really need marketing. You can all just go home, right? You fill your niche, go home. But it's not like that. Well, it's not like that. It's a constant battle for attention. Your consumers are loyal, but they're not super passionately loyal. You are not the only brand for them, and they can easily forget about you. So this means marketing is terribly important. Uh, it also means consistency is very, very important, because it, when you realize that the vast bulk of your customers and the vast bulk of your future growth is coming from people who are very light category-wise and, and hardly ever by you, um, well, it's a sobering thought. It makes you realise that um, if you make changes, you confuse them very quickly. Or, and, and it's not that they get very angsty about this confusion, they just choose another brand. If you, if you change your colours of your store and make it a little bit harder for them to be found, they buy lunch somewhere else. And they make these changes in their behaviour often without, without even realising it. So you're saying that consumers form a habit of buying your product or service, and if you make a slight change, they can change their habits as well. And indeed, yeah. Uh, the, loyalty is something that more marketers need to know about. It's not something that you can sort of magically get more of. But it's um, you need to recognise that you that customers have these loyalties, and it's your job to try not to disrupt them yeah. too much. Uh, um, and it's very sexy in marketing to make changes. I mean, marketing people are always making changes, changing colours, changing fonts, changing jingles. Uh, and this, this, you know, this corrupts, destroys brands. There's a, there's a lovely, you can Google it on the web, there's a lovely uh, image where it shows a Pepsi logo in the sort of 1800s and the Coke logo in the 1800s. And then change after change after change after change after change for Pepsi. And for Coke, none. Yeah. Yeah, which is the more successful brand? I guess that human behaviour is such that there is a constant drive for, for novelty 
And consumers seem driven these days by the latest new mobile phone or the latest new car. But in branding, you're saying it's the reverse of that. We, we need innovation to, so that we don't slip behind competitors. I mean, McDonald's is a lovely example of that recently. You know, the, the major innovations of basically selling coffee um, and, uh, and, you know, and vaguely modern food. You know, it's it just catching up. I mean, you need to do that. It's really uh, important. But you need to do it within a framework where consumers can, well, you still look like you. Uh, because uh, it's so easy. They, most of your consumers hardly ever buy you. Yep. Huh? And they, they buy other brands more often than they buy you. You're very easy to forget about. So it's a matter of keeping consistently there. A lot of our customers uh, are medium-sized businesses and don't have large budgets. Yes, one, one of the clear lessons, and it doesn't really matter what size your budget is, whatever size your budget is, spread it out so that you have coverage. Yeah. I mean, that will help you actually gain more reach, but you need that coverage over time as well. Yeah. I mean, you never, you never, every day some consumers make a decision to buy, but, and you never know when they're going to come into the market. Uh, you've got to be there. If you go off air for six months, well, that means the, the shortest, you know, the, 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 the six months is the minimum distance since they last saw something from you. And yeah. for some, it will be much, much longer than that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, ma marketing is, is one of, it's a, cultural disease we have in marketing, the sort of campaign orientation. Yeah, that's we, right. We do campaigns, do a big burst, feel very excited by it, and then stop and have a rest and regroup and plan. This is quite bizarre because, you know, the market is still going on while we're doing all this resting yeah. and planning. I think our customers have been educated by people who are possibly motivated by budget or, or lack of it. No, it's not, it's not the budgets because people, people will say this, like, I haven't got a... I haven't got enough budget to be doing something all year. Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, you, if people say, I haven't got a budget to be on, on air or doing whatever for 12 months of the year, I always say, yes, you have. You just divide by 12. Yeah, I agree. You know, <laughs> divide by 12 instead of dividing by four. I mean, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. It's just about spreading it out. No, it's institutionalized by workflows. People are used to that sort of workflow.